you took the risk of becoming ceo of two companies the other people i know are are elon musk or steve jobs they mm-hmm. took that risk and after them it's you uh, being ceo of two company did it wear you down like how did you manage both or do you have a new kind of startup model because you're also vc so does that make you wiser in uh, running two companies uh, in some ways um, you know to me it's all about you know solving the problem the you know that we the company set out to solve and then bring the best people to work with you on that right so if you have the right people yes you know it, it's uh, you can do there is no one formula like you know okay one person can only run one company a lot of it comes down to like what people you have where do you sp- need to spend your time and energy and you know your your where can you make the most impact so that wasn't an issue for me at all like you know many times people would ask me like you know how is it how do you manage two companies and that was that was like the the the, the, the issue, 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 issue the concerns <laughs> yeah like the like probably number 10 in my list of issues like the list of issues would be okay you know are we finding the right product market fit for this product addressable are we do we have the right sales leader at hand so things like that yeah nothing to do and with like you know my time as a ceo of two companies like that was never a problem and you got the ceo of splunk for sales you hired not the ceo the sales guy the vp of sales yeah, yeah. from splunk right at uh, abdynamics abdynamics okay yes. uh, first company uh, you know and i never really had any sales person before that like you know uh, so first time i was hiring a sales leader and i was like okay, what company i admire who would be close to the abdynamics uh, sales motion i would like to build after like studying a lot of different go to market sales motions and that time back then this was like you know 2010 so 15 years ago Uh, Splunk was doing extremely well. They went public, very successful IPO, and they just had like you know um, a very wonderful sales motion they built out at that time. And so you know, I so, said, okay, let me try to see if we can find someone who built that to join me <laughs> and you know build that that out for AppDynamics. So that's what we, that, that's what I did, and you know, I'm glad it worked out. So. But you do your own sales. The first six. Uh 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 clients you got on your own for harness yeah, right yes yes for every every company like you have to like you know for, uh, founder let's say if, if, if you're not out there with the customers initially you know doing selling yourself as a founder yeah you're not going to even understand the right product market fit yeah like it's you know at unusual ventures the number one thing that we talk about is the how do you become more systematic about product market fit like the product market fit is very similar most people think is like a black art you know no one how to get there is like just all you know intuition and uh, uh, you know just magically it happens what we like to do it at unusual is to break it down into you know a bit of science yeah. you know yes there is intuition and all that that's needed but it could be a lot of science behind it right and the science comes down to that like you know it's the it starts with like founders out there you know experimenting and uh, and validating their assumptions yeah you know but you cannot delegate it to someone you cannot yeah. delegate it to a sales person you that exercise you have to do it as yourself as a founder because you are the it was your dream and idea in the of what you wanted to the problem you want to solve so you have the most understanding of the problem and the domain now you got to go and like it refine it and iterate and build the right understanding by talking to the customers so what we teach there is like you know uh, at unusual is like you got to be very structured around it like you know at least 40 50 conversations you need to have yeah you know and you be, and you know the questions you ask in those conversations how you talk about like you know it's, it's really validating the problem is the yeah. problem real you know and kind of getting the few degree of nuances around that problem you know then is the solution validating the solution like you know solution that you are bringing is that the right solution is it going to work or not you know and you still like you know, then you start peeling a few layers in there as well and then validating the business value of it So yeah. those those are the three things that are that are imp- important like you know the and because it could be like it's a good problem it's a good solution but people don't really care about it they're yeah. not willing to pay any money for it then yeah. can you really build a business around it right so uh, to me it's like and these things i learned the hard way at abdynamics like you know when i was doing all this initially abdynamics was uh, right in the financial crisis of that the 2008 financial crisis i started the company in 2008 like a few months before the the Lehman, Lehman Brothers crash so there was no more money for me to hire a sales person yeah. <laughs> so i have to do the all everything myself uh, because we just didn't have you know uh, that much capital then i kind of you know found it like that's that is the way like you know for us to build the best product these are the three things we need to refine and iterate and like you know validating the problem validating the solution validating the business value the, uh, and so now we teach that at, at unusual like you know be very structured and scientific around it and yeah. for founders to drive it 
and you kind of learn from your your conversations you iterate you pivot and then you build the right product if you can build the right product then you know you can scale from there